Okay, setting your TIG welding balance is extremely important. It can wreck your tungsten if it's not set up correctly. Balance can even play an important role on how you prepare your tungsten. So let's get set up here to get some great results much easier, as well as give you some actual advice on how to get this perfectly dialed in for TIG welding aluminum. Okay, so let's get going here. The first thing that we need to clear up is there is a huge debate on the proper way to prepare your tungsten. Some people say you only can do it pointed. Some people prefer a blunted tip. Some people say to put a ball on the end. But honestly, the more that people read into this subject, the more confusing it can get. So many options, so many opinions, very confusing, right? Now, what I'm about to tell you is from my personal experience, so this is just my opinion, but the information I'm gonna give you here is gonna apply to whatever preparation you are using, doesn't matter. So, whatever setup you have running or you prefer using, here are some common problems that we have to deal with no matter what preparation you are using. This is basically gonna be something really annoying that I usually refer to as fluttering or misshaping. Now, look at this stupid stuff here. This is really annoying, right? Don't act like you haven't seen this happen before. It happens to everybody. Now, typically, this kind of stuff usually happens when people are welding at higher amperages. What's gonna happen is you're gonna see the tip of your tungsten start to freak out and flutter and shake all over the place. Now, typically, from personal experience, I find that this happens a little more frequently with a blunted tungsten or especially a pointed tungsten. It's all good if you wanna use those preparations. Let's get you sorted out here so this does not happen to you. Now, what is typical when somebody is using a pointed tungsten, for example, perhaps somebody is set up to TIG weld some really nice thin material. And when they're welding, everything is running along completely fine. Bzzz. Right on, looks great. Welding with something like this, you might be able to run a pointed or a blunted tip and everything stays completely fine with it. But what can sometimes happen is somebody goes to set up and weld on something flat that requires a little more heat. Perhaps something they switch to do something really hot like a fillet joint. And then all of a sudden, the tip of this poor tungsten just starts to freak right out. You can see it start to misshape like this one here. Sometimes you can see it ball up or excessively become big on the end. You might end up with something lopsided and crazy like this one here. You might end up with something with an excessively large ball on the end like this one here. Doesn't matter, whatever happens, if it doesn't stay the same as you originally set up, this is really fucking annoying. <laughs> Sometimes what happens if you are using a blunted tungsten, all of a sudden you start to weld something and you start getting these crazy nodules and weird shapes on them. Obviously, trying to weld with a preparation on the end of the tungsten like this is completely annoying. This is gonna give you something that I talk about on my channel very often. This is called arc deflection. Anytime you're welding at low amperage, you can see your arc starting to flicker off here and there, not locking onto the target you are aiming at. Trying to stay focused on an area that you are trying to weld will basically be impossible with a tungsten that has a tip like this now. Okay, so now we now know some very common problems. So what is the cause of these? And most importantly, how do we fix them? Like I mentioned, welding with some of this stuff may be completely fine at low amperage. But when we start getting welding into something with a little more heat, this is typically where the problems are gonna start to arise. Now, from my experience, and again, this is just my opinion. Typically, what is gonna happen as we start to increase the amperage or weld a little bit hotter, the positive side of the AC cycle is gonna cause instability with the tip of your tungsten and it is gonna cause it to flutter or misshape. So picture what I'm talking about, like this little graph here. Boom, graph, made that. Let's say this little graph here is me welding at 100 amps. We have our balance set to 75% negative and 25% positive. Now, when welding at 100 amps, we have a set amount of these values that we are gonna be using. But what happens when we start to increase the heat to something like 150 amps? All of a sudden, even though the ratio of our balance is still the same, we are now using different values of each side of the AC cycle. And what happens with whatever tungsten, like we talked about, welding at low amperage is cool with this amperage here. Now, all of a sudden, it has to deal with way more positive side of the cycle in this scenario here, even though the ratio has not changed at all. Now, if you have your tungsten set up like a pointed tungsten or a blunted tungsten, something that's really good at welding thin stuff, when we see how much more positive side of the AC cycle is now affecting this tungsten, we can understand why this is going to start freaking out. Now, something that may help with this is to step up your tungsten diameter it's gonna give you a little more tungsten that might hold the shape a little better. Okay, really quick here. I'm gonna pick you up for a second. Okay, it's so really important here. Instead of making you sit through a YouTube ad at this point here, I'm gonna tell you something really important that you can get at the end of this episode. So make sure you finish watching the entire episode and then that special announcement is gonna come later. All right, back to the show. So you can see with this graph here, as we are welding at higher amperages, we are obviously using more positive side of the AC cycle. 
even though, like I said, we are using the exact same ratio of balance like we set on the machine. Now, like a thin tungsten with a pointed tip on the end or a blunted tip like this, we are gonna reach the point where we go past the capacity where it is able to stay stable, and obviously it is gonna start to misshape. Sometimes when this happens, it'll partially form these stupid things like you see here, or it can completely roll over the end of your tungsten and cause excessive balling. I've talked about this many times on my channel before. One of my favorite settings to adjust on the fly that I do very frequently is balance. Okay, so very importantly off the top, we need to ask the question, what is balance when TIG welding? All right, what you're looking at here is an AC sine wave. AC stands for alternating current, which basically means that when you are TIG welding aluminum, you are alternating between the two polarities of DC negative as well as DC positive. Alternating between these two currents is very important. This is what allows us to TIG weld aluminum. So when we use the term balance, what this does is it enables us to adjust the amount of positive and negative we are using of an AC sine wave. There will be different scenarios and different uses for making these adjustments. So you can see here on this machine, I am using the new Everlast Typhoon. This machine is crazy so far. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna adjust the balance on this machine to something that is common to what somebody might set up. Let's say for example, I'm running approximately 20 to 25% of the positive side of the cycle, which means I'll be using approximately 80 to 75% of the negative side of the cycle. Now welding at low amperage, like we talked about, it may be completely fine. The preparation of the tungsten is gonna handle this setting completely fine with no problems but when I increase the amperage on the machine overall, this is when we are gonna to start to see really frustrating things happen right away. Typically, when I'm welding low amperage stuff, I like running more positive side of the AC cycle. This way, when I'm welding this stuff, I'm gonna get a great amount of cleaning action, and the weld is always gonna turn out to be nice and shiny. Now, what happens when I start to weld something that requires a little more heat? I'm gonna increase the negative side of the AC cycle, therefore decreasing the positive side. So as we start using more amperage to do a hotter weld, we are still gonna get the required cleaning action of the positive side of the cycle, but we also use less of the positive side of the cycle so that we do not see the tungsten being affected by any misshaping at all. You starting to see how this works? I guarantee you are gonna see no matter what type of preparation you're using, the tungsten is gonna misshape or flutter a lot less, and you're gonna see whatever preparation you prefer using last a much longer time. Now, this goes especially so for running a pointed tungsten. You're absolutely gonna to wanna to use more of the negative side of the cycle. This is gonna to help to keep your pointed tungsten nice and sharp or whatever. Now, using a blunted tungsten, this is honestly something that you probably want as well. On a blunted tungsten, if the positive side of the cycle is set too high, you're gonna see these little nodules form first on these little corners here. So with a blunted tungsten, I'm gonna do the exact same thing with my balance settings. Now, I personally, and again, personally, chill out, prefer using a tungsten with a small ball on the end of it. I find that this one is a little less susceptible to having any inconsistencies with your balance settings. I think that you will find, especially if you're just getting going with TIG welding, even if your balance setting is set a little bit inaccurately, you will get away with a little more wiggle room with a ball on the end of your tungsten. But when you get your balance setting set perfectly for running a ball as well, this thing is gonna be rock solid for welding. Now what I'm gonna do typically when I'm welding hotter stuff, I'm gonna find the area right below the threshold of where I see the tungsten start to flutter or start to misshape. At this point, what I will do is back the balance off about three to 5%. This is gonna leave you somewhere around the perfect sweet spot right here. If we go above this, obviously, we're gonna to start to see things go absolutely crazy. And this threshold is gonna be very different for every type of machine that you can use. This is gonna be something that is extremely subjective to whatever machine you are using as well as your setup. Find what works best for whatever setup you are using. Now, the same goes for the other side of the polarity on the negative side. If you want the preparation to be unchanged and not flutter or anything on your tungsten, then why don't we just run all negative on that side? Let's not get too crazy right now, okay? What's gonna happen as you start to run too much negative side of your polarity, what's gonna happen is you're gonna start to see things looking grainy and dull. And you're also gonna see the cleaning action of your welding area start to diminish or disappear completely. So while the negative side keeps your tungsten from going crazy, you're gonna find that there is a point of diminishing returns with this side of the polarity as well. And like I said about the positive side, this is gonna be very different and subjective to whatever type of machine and setup you are using. What you can do is try and find this sweet spot for both high and low amperage welding. Sometimes what can happen is you can start to see the tungsten begin to crack. This is a really annoying problem to deal with as well. This used to drive me crazy. 
Now, from what I have experienced, this typically starts to happen when the positive side of the cycle becomes insufficient as well. From my experience, like I say, running a little bit more of the positive side of the cycle is gonna help to prevent this from happening. But again, this amount of positive is gonna vary for whatever type of machine you are using and whatever type of preparation you prefer. Higher amperage will require less amounts of positive side of the cycle, while you can get away with a little more welding at lower amperage settings. In my experience of TIG welding in production, I have used really high-end, state-of-the-art inverter type machines. I have used transformer type machines that are as old as I am. And now with this understanding of the balance that I'm describing to you here, no matter what machine you are using, whether newer or older, whether you're welding thick material or thin material, I'm gonna be able to keep my tungsten super clean and in perfect shape for welding. And with whatever preparation you prefer, you're gonna get some great results with welding. Now, I teach people how to TIG weld online in my program. I run one of the most in-depth and thorough TIG welding programs online where I teach people how to weld with whatever setup they have access to or have at their place. But I have just released a free course that you can take right now. This is a complete understanding on how to break down and understand everything with TIG welding aluminum from the bottom up. Go take my class right now, it's free. Do a random act of kindness for a stranger today. My name is Dusty, Phil and Shell, we will talk soon, peace.